We are back with another review today. We are checking out the C64 Mini. That is the Commodore 64 Mini. So without further ado, let's hop right into this review slash unboxing. Um, so we got here the C64 Mini and uh, it is pretty cool. Let me tell you, out of the, the two classic consoles that I picked up this holiday season, this one didn't disappoint. So let's get off with that for sure. So we got the ESRB rating is 10 plus, obviously. It's all Commodore games. The world's best-selling home computer, Reborn. You got 64 games included. You got the classic controller here, or joystick, I should say. You got the keyboard, non-functional, but definitely looks identical um, and a really cool miniature version. Um, you got plugs into your TV via included HDMI cable, but they did not include the AC adapter, which is the same thing that Sony did this year with their... Sony Classic Edition, they didn't drop with the uh, the brick, uh, as what you'd call it. Um, but basically, a lot of us have those sitting around. So it's a kind of a complaint that it's not complete out the box. But on the other hand, most people who are poking around buying C64 minis are probably able to uh, have a spare brick or two for themselves. So we got the c64.com we have the model here we have a bunch of the legal information 1977 to 1984 and then re-released in 2018 here and then uh, on the ends here let's see what we got here let's actually here let's snip open this end cap right here and if we can I'll show you the. There we go. So, this is what's all included. Well, we're going to show you what's included, but this is the graphical interface of it. We have the C64 mini computer, HDMI cable, you have the 64 pre installed applications, you have the C64 joystick, you have the USB power supply, and the instruction manual. Again, keyboard is non functional, virtual keyboard feature included, which is totally cool, by the way. Uh, I didn't go over that yet, but that is definitely an awesome feature. You have the AC adapter, which is not included. Um, you will also need a TV, obviously, um, of some sort or some form of way to hook up HDMI to a screen. It doesn't have to necessarily be a TV, but it does tell you you need a 5 volt, 1 amp output AC adapter, which is basically like your uh, standard Apple um, power adapters. Um, slice open this end right there. I don't want to cut the cardboard. That's the main thing about these weird flap. These weird flap arrangements is you can easily cut the cardboard if you're not very careful. There we go. Uh, we actually got a little rip right there, but whatever. Um, let's see what we got here. Features, you got high definition output, 720 via HDMI, which does look beautiful. Pixel perfect display. Um, it's got a save game function, which is pretty cool. It's got two USB plug, two USB ports, which you can plug in a USB keyboard, which is neat, so you don't have to use the on-screen on keyboard. You can actually plug in just a regular USB keyboard and use it as um, the keyboard that's pictured here. And uh, yeah, you're also able to add a uh, second joystick as well. Uh, so yeah, let's check this out and pop out the slide. Now this is just like how, how Sony did it. They did a, a box inside of a box and the inner box is branded, which is really cool. Um, super awesome that they did that. It looks nice that it's not just a plain box. Once you open it up, further packaging, branding, which is awesome. You have the nice C64 mini frame here. You got the joystick here. Let's check it out. Pull the computer out. And then we'll put the computer over here. And on the inside here, you have the joystick plug. Here is your power cable. You have the HDMI cord. You have the quick start guides. This is Retro Reborn. So you have some advertisements. We'll check all this out. And then we have the joystick itself right here, which will slide out. And then let's start off with let's start off with the joystick uh, at first. So this is the C64 joystick here. It still has the look at that. It still has the ooh. There's some ASMR for my channel. There you go. Me peeling plastic off of a C64 joystick. Um, I bet you no channel on YouTube is doing that. That's what's up. 
So you got the red red joystick here with the, the red little slide O-ring, I guess you'd call it, or a washer. Um, you got the red buttons, you got the red corner buttons, and then you have the red command buttons down here. You got a USB plug, so it's actually cool that you got a Commodore joystick, a USB Commodore joystick out of the whole deal here too. Now this was 60 bucks, so um, pretty pretty inexpensive in regards to the, the you know re-releases of these retro classic consoles, so it's not something that's going to break the bank. A little more than the Atari one, not as much as the N60... Uh, Super Nintendo Classic. Now this is the previous version of the plug and play Commodore series. Now this is the TV one which plugs in with AV. As you can see the C64 there brought to you by Mammoth Games. Now the joystick on this one is black but all the other buttons are pretty much the same except for the triangular corner buttons here. Uh, joystick is about the same size. They have about the same weight even though this one has games inside of it. Um, this one does have an on off button. Again everything is self-contained inside this particular unit here. Now well, I did put these uh, to a little comparison here. Now this one obviously it is going through AV but the games themselves are different. I mean, they're the same games, but they're just the, the gameplay is different. This is more of a classical interface. This is more of like a reimagine or reborn interface, if I would, uh, to compare the two. Uh, but basically, the uh, the new version is is super awesome. It's nice. It's a re appeal to a newer generation or a whole another generation versus something like this, the Mammoth version, which kind of appeals to more of the classical gamer uh, who remembers it and probably played it as a child. This is probably going to appeal to those people as well as a new spin to it but again super awesome the joystick itself was really um really nice it was nice when you when you held the joystick it didn't feel cheap if the buttons were responsive um and so were all the buttons over here i mean the functions of everything how you navigate through the systems uh the system itself we'll talk about that a little more when we get to this, the console but um, it was very easy to navigate using this uh joystick itself so cheers to them for that that was uh, absolutely awesome and we got Retro Reborn, the world's first retro game subscription service. So you got the Ant Stream. Here's a little advertisement here. Interesting. Um, you got the Quick Start Guide, the C64 Mini, brought to you by Retro Games. And then it's got all the information in here about everything explained. It's got the uh, multiple languages. We got French. We got Spanish. And some kind of QR code in the back. Hmm, cool. Quick start guide. We got our HDMI cord. Let's check it out, see if it's branded. I don't remember if it was or not. Let's see though. Uh, unbranded, unbranded HDMI cord. So just generic HDMI cord, nothing too fancy. It would have been cool if it said like C64 Mini on there. Um, it's just something that Nintendo's doing that other companies are not doing. Uh, they're going that extra mile and branding everything. Uh, this is an unbranded USB or micro USB to USB cord. Uh, it just has the USB insignia on there and nothing on the back. Uh, so another unbranded cord. Kind of eh on that because they went through the detail of everything else. And wait to see how impressive the system itself is. Um, here it is right here. Here is the console itself. The attention to detail on this is absolutely superb. Um, look at that. I mean... It makes you want to touch the keys. It makes you want to touch the keys. None of them actually work or depress at all. It's got a uh, LED light here on the front. It does have the, it has like the vintage right here, which makes it look like the uh, the speakers of the vents on the original. And then you have the logo right there, which is super cool. Uh, the front here, look at that nice rolled edge on that front. Here's the rolled edge on the back here. You can see that nice angled edge. The plastic is cut, superb. You can definitely tell that it's not some kind of shoddy, um, creation here. This is definitely something that there was uh, some work definitely put into this, like the corners here where the power in is. It's not sharp at all, which is awesome. Uh, we did a review on this this channel with a counterfeit console, and it was just it was absolutely pitiful in regards to the way that the plastic was cut. It was very sharp on all edges, which is great. It just shows that there was a, a lot of effort put forth to bring this to the market, and I, what a superb job that this was. I mean, this is absolutely masterful. I'd compare this probably to the SNES or the uh, Nintendo Classic Edition. Uh, you know, yeah, PlayStation probably, the PlayStation Classic probably would go below like an At Games release, I would say. Um, an At Games Sega Genesis Classic Edition. Uh, if I was to compare that, this would go above those absolutely. 
And you can see the end caps there are very nice. They have the rolled little grafting vents right there on the corners. Super cool. So we got our micro USB power in here. We have the HDMI on the back. We have the two USB ports that we were talking about for a secondary controller because it comes with one, but I didn't see that they sell these separately when I bought this. It was just a console like this. So I guess if you have a buddy that has one, you can basically have them bring their controller over and you can both hook it up and play. Or you can have your main controller hooked up and you can also plug in a USB keyboard here. Now we have the, uh, the power button right there. And then on the bottom here, we have some more vintage to the bottom. We have some, com uh, some compliance uh, wordage there. 2018 Retro Games Limited input, uh, 5 volt, 1 amp. So that's basically um, the type of plug that you're going to need to plug the USB into, the micro USB to USB into. We have a, so, now this is awesome. This was a detail that not a lot of companies go to the effort of doing. Support at the C64.com. So it's not something where it's like, oh, I need to keep the manual, oh, this, that, and the other. This is something where the support for for this, uh, for as long as I guess this is going to be in existence, is going to be at that email right there. I mean, I think that that is super awesome that they put that on the console itself. I mean, it's there's a bunch of other nonsense here. That's something that actually might uh, benefit you and help you. So I'm glad they put that in a permanent place for you. And it's where all the other information that you probably need to know about, like the power adapter you need to buy. Um, so that's great that they did that. Another superb thing. They got these nice little feeties on here, which are uh, kind of a smooth and shiny feet. Let's see if we can get the feeties there, the little rubber feet. But it's the kind that definitely once it's on a flat surface over time, if, as it moves around, they will scuff up and you will see um, usage. Like the entire unit itself could look mint and undusted. Um, but these feet can look all scuffed up and it could kind of you know, in a way, like, remove the appearance of the console to be uh, as, you know, pristine as it should. But, uh, yeah, other than the feeties, this thing is beautiful. This is an amazing um, work of art right here, I guess you could say, especially if you're interested in the type of retro game that this is packed in. Now, let's check out those games themselves. We'll talk about the interface itself, because the interface itself was absolutely amazing. Um... I'll show you some of the games here. Let's grab the box. There we go. So these are some of the games that we have in the back here. And you can see, like, for example, uh, like Pit Stop. Uh, Pit Stop 2 was super awesome uh, in regards to how, how it played, how it filled the whole screen up. We got Winter Games. Um, this even had C64 Basic, which is great if you have a USB keyboard. Again, plug it up, get involved with it, and, uh, yeah, enjoy it. California Games. <laughs> I mean, come on, these are some awesome games here. Um, you got the full list right here, which you can see right here. I'll, I'll scroll through for you so you can check it out. You got the full list right there. Breakdance, Chips Challenge, I mean, all these. Street Swords Basketball, Cosmic Causeway, Cyberdyne Warrior, Cybernoid, you got Robin of the Wood, Silicone Warrior. Uh, you got Sword of Fargal. I mean, so many here. It's just, it's un, it's insane how many are, are actually included in this, which is um, actually cool that they included 64 games, even though it is a C64 um, mini. Uh, I think that's pretty neat that they actually that they included that many games on this and didn't try to cheat the customer at all. So they made this with the customer's interest in mind, and I think that is why this console probably wins the classic release for the winter in regards to this versus the PlayStation Classic. This is going to be the one you're going to want to spend the money on. Um, you know, with, with the PlayStation Classic being 100 and this being 60, you can grab this. You might be able to find, if somebody does have an extra controller, you might even be able to buy that second controller and have two controllers for your C64 Mini for the 100 bucks, or just save the 40 bucks and invest it in something else so if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you've played the c64 mini or any type of commodore system in the past or as a child let us know in the comments below and uh, if you want more content like this subscribe for more we do pickup videos every single thursday so be on the lookout for that have a great rest of your day